yeah, so here's here's part two. So <laughs> we have these bullshit wars. By the way, not just one or two of them. I forgot there was the Vietnam War as well. We have all these different wars that these males get us involved in. Either they lie to get us into the war, they make some shit up, or they exaggerate the capabilities of the enemy. I remember I used to hear about weapons of mass destruction all the time. I remember when war used to mean this government is a threat to the existence of that government. That's literally what a war used to mean. You know why they called it the American Revolutionary War? Because the British government was a threat to the existence of the emergency, emerging uh, American government that was beginning to take shape in the United States. That's the reason why that war was fought, because both governments stood an equal chance of destroying the other. Likewise, well, not equal chance. Maybe I should pick my words more carefully. At the very least, a government has the potential to destroy another government. Likewise, you look to World War II. Germany had the potential, if left unchecked, to threaten the existence of the American government. Same thing with Japan. This is how wars used to be. Now, a war can simply just be um, justified or rationalized as, well, if we leave these people alone, they might kill a few thousand of our citizens. Now, I understand that there are some people who would get emotional, particularly right-wingers, who will put aside economic arguments, who will put aside any, any logical arguments in favor of revenge. Right? We just need to go over and do it because they're obviously a threat. The more logical thing to have done would have been to beef up security, find the specific organization that did it, and then just kill the specific individuals who were the threat. Instead of doing that, we got embroiled in other conflicts, and let's just say it was true for the sake of argument. I still, I'm still skeptical about there being these weapons. I don't know why people wouldn't use them when we were entering into Iraq. That would seem like a good time to use a weapon. But okay, let's say for the sake of argument, the, I remember I had a, a conversation with my father once where he said, well, hey, maybe they just shipped it to another country. Okay, let's say they did. Do they have the capability of sending that missile or that weapon from where they're located all the way over uh, 3,000 plus miles? Last I checked, they didn't have those kind of missile capabilities. That's a fact. I, I don't, like, if you really think that those people in that part of the world are a threat to us, do you want to tell me how, like, during Operation Desert Storm... By the way, that wasn't. I think that was only about a decade and a half before this incident. Um, during Operation Decade Storm, we literally went over and decimated an entire country, an uh, entire country's military in Iraq. It wasn't. Even, they weren't even a threat. So how are they going to get that weapon of mass destruction? How are they going to use any kind of missile capability to to launch it from their location? And how would our military? as advanced as it was, how would we not be able to catch a missile on the radar? How would they, how would they be able to shoot something from 3,000 miles away without it being caught? Does anybody even think about this shit? And also, let's suppose that, okay, they succeed in killing a few thousand people. So, the logic that now exists is that we should burn trillions of dollars sacrifice thousands of lives, and destabilize entire countries because they may have the ability to kill a few thousand of us? That is the rationale for war now. That does not, that's not a logical argument to start a war with another country. A war, as Sun Tzu put it, should be your very last resort. It should never be something you just put on the table. The way that these male leaders acted... They act like they're a child with, with mommy's credit card or something, where they can just max it out and spend it however they want. It seems like an excuse. It seems like they're just looking for a rationalization to do it. Maybe their real reason is oil. Maybe it's uh, minerals. I don't know. All I know is that the rationalizations for waging a war now 
are infinitely different than they were back a few decades ago. Our rationalizations at this point have gotten so ridiculous that they are devoid of any kind of logic. Because spending trillions of dollars affects the quality of life of your country. It affects the future of your country. So if you're going to be pissing away trillions of dollars and we're not going to get anything back for it, what do you call that? You have to be able to put emotion aside. And that's exactly what they didn't do. But these are great leaders, right? Who got us involved in these fucked up wars. And you know what? As much as I don't like Trump, he had a good point. What do we have to show for it? Hmm? What do we have to show for it? Did it make our world safer? You have these radical Islamists burning down cities in France, doing all sorts of other fucked up shit, fucking with Israel on October the 7th. And then look at what Israel did back. Tens of thousands of Palestinian children killed. Palestinian children, uh, women, other people. So you have all this fucked up shit going on. Did our involvement change any of that? Did the fighting stop? Did the violence stop? Did we provide any real permanent, long-lasting stability to these governments with our involvement? Did it happen? No. Did we respect any historical precedent when it came to countries fighting the Middle East? Especially Afghanistan, which is, I think it was like the graveyard of countries, some kind of nickname. No. But men are good leaders, right? Yeah, they're great leaders. We, we got to throw away women leadership because these men, you know, they just, they just know what they're, talk, they're doing. Even though we've seen their failures repeatedly. I don't want to hear any bullshit about Obama or Biden when you had seven years to start these wars and to wrap this shit up. You're the ones who fucked this up. So don't go blaming other people for your bullshit. If you start something, you should finish it. And you didn't. And you can't be delusional enough to expect a constant re-election of your political party every four to eight years. You can't expect that. Now, even, and I'll, I'll throw you this, this too. Think about how irrational it is that they thought they could go over there and stabilize a region when we had stuff like the Crusades. I mean, it, it really is the epitome of hubris. That we had people fighting for hundreds of years, whatever their rationalizations or whatever their defense was, I don't give a fuck. The point is, they were never able to bring stability to those parts of the world. Never. But somehow this futuristic army thought, well, we can do it. Can't do it either. But yeah, you guys, you're the leaders. You're the people we need to be looking up to. Mm -hmm. So let's see. You fuck up on these wars. You can't follow through on these wars. You're uh, basically uh, nonstop losing. Um, can't consistently win elections. Uh, even, <laughs> even, if, even when you're trying to, you can't do it. So you, you fail there too. Um, and this is the thing too, is they basically want to roll back women's rights so that they can always win the elections. So they can always have people that are politi think politically like them. But they allowed for the proliferation of nuclear weapons. Uh, we now have hypersonic, I think, hypersonic missiles. Um, people, it's just going to keep, they're just going to, nations are just going to keep competing to see who can have the technological edge. Eventually, somebody's going to fuck this up. Uh, the nuclear, uh, again, the nuclear luck, it's going to run out. Somebody's going to make a mistake. Again, statistically, long run. Uh, so yeah, that's not a good plus for male leadership when you are mass producing weapons of mass murder. I mean, again, the more of these things that are out there, the more of you increase the likelihood of somebody who doesn't have the best intentions, may not even care about the systems they're a part of. For example, anarchists. Some of these people just don't give a shit. You think they wouldn't want to get a hold of one of those things? Because uh, I've heard that it doesn't take a lot to destabilize, destabilize the world economy. Yeah, that's a great thing. Let's just keep, a weapon, or keep around these weapons of mass murder because they provide us with the illusion of peace. It's temporary peace at best, you could argue. In the long run, that peace is going to crumble into a thousand pieces. Then we'll see how great this leadership was, huh? 
But I think more than that, you could look to the destruction of the environment too, which I already mentioned, where it's getting worse every year. The evidence is becoming more and more incontrovertible. Even a few more conservatives are starting to come over, especially the younger ones, and realizing, like, I have a, I have a friend who has some conservative values. Even he's like, yeah, it's, it's happening. You know, it's real. And the old timers are denying it. Uh, some of the middle-aged people are denying it. It doesn't matter whether you accept it or not. So we have a lot of seriously fucked up failures. Oh, but it gets better. How about the fact that the conviction rate for rapists is abysmal. It's fucking low as hell. Now, if the right, right, right wing really wanted to win people over, don't you think it'd be uh, kind of a good idea to maybe prove to women that you can shoulder the responsibility of having soul power? But the problem is, what have you done to earn it? Do women feel safer? Do women feel like they're not going to get raped, get assaulted, get fucked up? No. Men continue to fuck around with women and say all and talk all this trash, but the simple fact is they were the ones who started this shit in the first place. If men had done their job from the beginning and protected women and stopped abusing them, you realize that feminism would have never happened in the first place? The feminism is literally a response to the abuse that, that men in power deal out against other people, against other men, other women. This is a response. And what's interesting is they have somehow managed to manufacture uh, a bogus uh, narrative where they are somehow the victims. Uh, and one of the things that they claim victimhood on is, oh, well, you know, they take half of your money. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me tell you something. I would rather lose half of my shit than get raped. Do you know why? And this is something they'll never tell you. Because they like leaving this little part of the story out. I even notice that when people bring up these subjects of rape. When people get raped, they develop things called nervous system disorders. And a nervous system disorder can fuck your life up. Same thing with depression and anxiety. And sometimes these things can be life-lasting. And that, unfortunately, is also the reason why some of these men do it. Because the abuse is actually a mechanism of control. You see, if a woman, if her properly, if she is too depressed or too anxious to take care of herself, then she's forced to be dependent on the male in that relationship. This is how predatory men not only secure the relationships they have with the women in their lives, but they ensure their continued dominance, um, or sorry, domineering over these women. It's not just dominance at this point, because that would be an insult to people who are actually consensual. Uh, this, is, this is the point. So how is male leadership good when it gave birth to an, a generation of angry people who were sexually abused and abused in all these different ways? How do you call that good leadership? And I know what they're going to point to. They're going to say, but what about the bridges? What about the machines? What about those? This is really interesting because philosophically, if you really, I mean, philosophically, it's pointless. It's like, yeah, okay, you can build a bridge, but you're also in, ensuring the destruction of our species with your behavior. But then projecting that onto other people and saying, oh, no, it's them doing it. Oh, really? Last time I checked, it wasn't women who were proliferating nuclear weapons. It wasn't women who made up the majority of the people in the military. So no, the women are not making the decisions about how many bombs we should be uh, pumping out every year. That wasn't them. Were the women the ones who created and sustained a system where people were dependent on fossil fuels so they could get to work? so that they could use any of the things that they need to hold down a really decent job? That wasn't them. That was you motherfuckers. Women haven't had power until recently, and even then it's not really that, it's not impressive. But you guys, you found some way, you said, well, the birth rates are declining. Uh-huh. So wait a minute. That's somehow, that's, that's, a, that's not an existential threat to the species. 
An existential threat is where the planet becomes uninhabitable, and then we can't live here anymore. And last I checked, we don't have the technology to immigrate our people to other worlds. So congratulations, you're, you're just projecting. It would just scale down civilization. It wouldn't erase our people. But yeah, have your male leadership. I am looking forward to I'm looking forward to it in a way because I want to see the blowback to it. 